Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our, our Agile Shorts um, uh, recording for this, this, uh, this session. What, what day are we? This is the 16th of February. Uh, we're going to continue our, um, our theme this, this month, which is a tribute to the Agile Manifesto, which was what, written 20 years ago, I think this month. And our, our episode today is going to focus on some common myths uh, around Kanban adoption. And, and why Kanban? Uh, what does that have to do with the Agile Manifesto? Well, in, in our opinion, uh, Kanban and Lean, really, really Lean thinking, Lean manufacturing methods that contribute, contributed to some of the thinking uh, by the signatories of the Manifesto. So people that created Scrum and, and uh, XP and DSDM and all these people sort of came from a Lean Agile background, a Lean manufacturing background in some cases. And so Kanban has been around for a long, long time. And um, one of our esteemed col colleagues at, at Azure Meridian wrote a blog, blog article recently about some of the myths around Kanban. Jolly. Uh, and so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to him and maybe you can sort of explain yeah. the thought process behind your, your article. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Kumar. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, I, I wrote up the, the Kanban myths uh, post on uh, Meridian Point uh, was because when, when I go to uh, our clients, when, when, uh, when I engage with the teams, there is almost this religious debate as to whether they, we should adopt Scrum or Kanban. And, and there are very strong opinions on both sides uh, most of the time. And, and uh, the reason that I have seen uh, for that debate, almost a majority of the cases, the reason is that not many people know what Kanban means. They have heard about it. They, they have heard about it from a manufacturing perspective in Toyota uh, or, or one, of the, one of the manufacturing plants, uh, but they haven't heard about that in the context of software delivery. And I don't blame them. Uh, it is not very common. Uh, Scrum is a very universally known framework. And, and there have been many patterns discussed about it, many articles, many evangelists uh, uh, talking about Scrum and its adoption. And it's a very uh, well-known framework by now. So it's not surprising that, that people are hesitant to bring in Kanban, which they primarily think of as a, as a manufacturing lean thinking uh, kind of framework rather than one for software. Uh, mm -hmm. But my experience, and I'm sure uh, Mike and Kumar, uh, your experience has also been that uh, Kanban is equally valid uh, in, in, a, in a software environment, in the software delivery, because at the core of it is the aspect of reducing waste or eliminating waste. And uh, waste is a common thing in everyday scenario, whether that be our personal lives, whether that be in manufacturing, whether that be in software development, it's a, it's a very common thing. And using those practices to eliminate waste uh, is, is something that, that is very, very relevant in software delivery as well. Absolutely. Um, 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 I think some of the myths. Do you want to talk about some of the myths, or where yeah. do you want to take us? Yeah. Let me let me start with the with the, with the first one that 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 I that I wrote up on on the blog um, article, which is uh, the Kanban is is not for new teams. Kanban mm -hmm. needs expertise. Kanban needs you to be first good enough so that you can graduate to the next level of Kanban. Uh, and, and good enough, getting to the good enough state, Scrum is so much better because mm -hmm. uh, it's already telling you what to do. And, and that is what is most of the time the conflict. A framework like Scrum or other ones, I'm not point, singling out Scrum for this, gives you a defined set of rules that you have to follow. On the other hand, Kanban leads with the fact that you don't have any roles. Um, you, you start where you are, and that's almost always a very scary thing. If you want to start where you are, why are you doing an agile transformation? It is supposed to be a transformation. You have to transform, but well, what's the point of starting where you are, which is kind of the first um, uh, uh, principles of Kanban. Um, so that is that brings in that level of uncertainty into the teams that we are not good enough to graduate to the level of Kanban, which is very uh, high level and, and uh, something to aspire to rather than what we can start with. But the base rules of Kanban um, are, are really, really simple. And it allows new teams to latch on really fast 
without having to invest a whole lot of energy and, and time in adhering to a framework that, that could otherwise be in place. Yeah, I think it's interesting, Jolly, you talk about that. It used to be uh, even, even just five to 10 years ago that the thought was, hey, once you've mastered Scrum, then you can evolve and master Kanban because it's going from iterative flow, taking big chunks of work to little, and then taking it down to continuous flow, which is really just as the work comes at you and no, have, not having these artificial starts and stops, right? But to your point, the setup part of it when you are allowed or permitted, uh, able to start where you are, yeah. um, it, it, it enables you to start getting immediate results. And right. I guess some of the scary part about it is it also exposes immediate issues mm. and impediments mm. like right away. Like right. these are things, okay, that where I'm at right now, right. this is preventing me from being more effective. This is preventing me from learning how to see waste, from being yeah. a learning organization, from from having this continuous mindset in terms of learning and seeing and then acting on yeah. things and, and reacting accordingly. So, yeah, I think that the exposure part of it, that right away you mm-hmm. see the challenges in front of you versus yeah. after you've had some chances to go through the full right. full cycle of elements involved in like an iterative or scrum type framework right. can be very can be very challenging for folks who are change averse, yes. yeah. right? I think that that's, yeah. that's- I, I agree. Thing. And I mean, looking at the rules of Kanban that you have in your article, the four principles, right? You, you mentioned one of them, start with what you do now uh, and, then, and then agree to pursue incremental evolutionary change. That's a great place to start with. You know, it's like, like as you mentioned, Mike, you know, um, um, identifying the impediments, identifying the, the blocks, the constraints that keep the team from being more efficient, that identifying the wastes that are inherent in, in, in any system, really, and that agreement to pursue that evolutionary change, yeah. it's, it should be very liberating, right? So, yeah. you know, certainly it's, I think, less difficult for new teams to adopt something like Kanban right. than it would be for some, a team to adopt Scrum. Scrum is a little bit more prescriptive in that. Mm-hmm by the um, same, the same context. Yeah, and, and one of the things that I almost always tell people is, and I think Mike, you alluded to this, which is uh, Agile in any form doesn't solve your problems. It just shines a light on it, right? And, and as you said, Mike, I mean, Kanban tends to light, shine that light much sooner and much yeah. more clearly than any of the other frameworks that I have seen. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's up to you to solve it. And now that is a challenge <laughs> and, and yeah. uh, you have to solve it and uh, figuring out those solutions uh, rather than masking them would be uh, uh, the right approach. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that perception of lack of, a, lack of a structure is lack of a solution. It's right. like, it's not a solution. It's, it's just a, it's a construct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I fully agree with you on that. Yeah. And the, uh, the other two rules are respect the current process roles and responsibilities. And, you know, change is a hard thing. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and just the change management aspects built into that statement, respect the current processes, roles and responsibilities. Huge. Because it's a much easier way to ease into an agile way of working. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, you don't have to learn new new roles. You don't have to learn what a scrum master is or a product owner or whatever. There are some roles, and in, in fairness, um, Kanban does um, have have some roles. And I can't remember what they all what they call them, but um, the, uh, you know, in, in the pure uh, Kanban model for software development. But it's an easier transition because it's it's very translatable to what people do today. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. and adopt those roles. You're right, right. And then adopt the a one, multitude of structures. That's yeah. right, and the, and the last one is encourage acts of leadership at all levels. Yeah, that's yeah, a, I, powerful. You, indeed. What does that mean? Indeed, yeah. I I um I heard this. I have not been to a Toyota <clears> plant, um, uh, but I heard an uh, an experience uh, that a that a fellow coach related to me. Uh, he he had the opportunity to go to a Toyota manufacturing facility. And, and uh, one of the things that he saw was, uh, you know, now we all know that the Anton cord that anybody can pull and, and it brings the assembly line to a halt so that you can either fix a problem or suggest an improvement, right? And, and it was 
so emphasized that everyone, if you if you do pull that Anton card, you will get a thank you from your boss or yeah. the floor supervisor or the foreman or whoever is in charge there, right? It's not like, why did you pull the Anton card? The first is, thank you for doing this. So the leadership uh, at all levels, that, op- that opportunity that you take uh, for an improvement mm-hmm. and, and show that to the rest of the company uh, has to be welcomed, right? And, and it cannot be that, you know, teams are ready and the individual people are ready to do it, but the rest of the leadership should be there as well to, uh, to allow that to happen, not just yeah. for the Say, hey, uh, I am going to pull the Anton card and b- bring the uh, whole assembly line to a halt. But that being re- uh, that being rewarded in some way, not maybe not monetarily, but being rewarded by acknowledgement at the least, uh, yeah. it is what lets us do that continuous improvement over over a period of time. There's not only no fear around that; it's actually looked at as a positive. I that's think that's right. very interesting. You talk about that plant in Kentucky, um, yeah. where they have that, and I. I remembered seeing the stat. I, I should have looked it up before we got on again today because it's been a while since I looked at it, but it was something like a thousand times a week yeah. or something like that where it was pulled down. Not every time the line stops, right? But it's, right. But it's real critical ones they do. Um, but it's pulled a lot, right? A, an awful lot. And yeah. there was a, uh, I guess some folks from uh, one of the other auto manufacturers some years ago that went down and they would look at that and they would say, how do you build cars when you're willing to stop the line so long? And the response from the, the tour guide was, how do you build cars if you don't? Yeah. So it was a completely 180 mindset. And to your point, what you just mentioned, John, the mindset around the value of doing a certain activity right. is, is probably more critical and more valuable to the whole than the actual functional oh. you know, activity of pulling the cord. The fact that it's psychologically safe, yeah. that it's promoted, that it's seen as valuable, that it's seen as we can't produce cars well if you don't do this versus right. the opposite where you have 25% of your plan is a QA response right. where in Toyota, they just roll off the line and go to the, go to, right. go to the, right? So yeah, it's just a different There's mindset a- that, a comp- that complements and a, that Kanban kind of it looks at and adheres to. And I think that's why it's yeah maybe also a little scary because when yeah. you're telling somebody, hey, you have to slow down to speed up sometimes. Management doesn't necessarily, in a lot of cases, want to hear that, right? Yeah. They're already feeling like they're not fast enough. How is that going to help? Us? There's there's a really good podcast series. Uh, I think it's This American Life that examines the experience of General Motors back in the 80s and early 90s as they partnered with Toyota uh, to build um, a rebadged Toyota Corolla in the U.S., uh, the, the, I think they called it the Chevy Nova at the time, you know, late 80s, early 90s Chevy Nova it was really a rebashed Corolla. Um, but the, the interesting thing from the, the, from the podcast, it's, it's like an hour long show. It's split into two 30 minute segments. And, and we'll put the link uh, below uh, for those of you who are interested. Is it, 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 they took the worst, absolute worst GM plant in the country, in the world. These, these are the, the, the cars that came out of this plant were absolutely absolutely the worst in the nation in terms of quality. Um, and, and the plant was actually closed and the, U, uh, the uh, UAW actually worked to deal with GM uh, to, you know, again, to be the, the plant that reopens and works with Toyota to learn how to build cars the Toyota way, right? And which they did. Uh, same people, same leaders, same plant workers that in the past were not building great cars and they were involved in all sorts of other activities, um, um, now are building cars that were equal to on par with cars that were built in Japan. And they were, again, they were using this, these four simple rules, right? That, that govern how Kanban systems work, empowered their people their line workers to be able to stop the line. It was the biggest difference is that GM plant before this the line never stops. If there's a defect in the car, well, the car is pushed off at the end of the line to some defect lot where it's ripped apart to find the one bolt that needed to be tightened um, and then put back together. And, and I'm sure for those of you watching in the software industry, you will 
recognize the parallel, right? Fixing the errors, the bugs at the end versus fixing them at the time when you create them. It's, it's such, a, such a, 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 a waste that, that you have to undo all of that work to, to redo later on. But anyway, we'll put the link down below. Yeah, keeping the line moving is the output mindset. Keeping, yeah. stopping the line to build the quality in is the outcome mindset. And those two differences, just the simple two differences in the words that even seem similar in their own right, uh, but they, their implications are drastically different in terms of outcome. Yeah. Um, it is, is, is the basis of this. And, and, and I'm wondering if that isn't some of the, when you look at frameworks, you can imply and install that it's kind of a, a plug and play improvement system versus when you're asking folks to change the way they think or change the way they look at value in, in the way of outcomes versus output, that that permeates a much broader range usually than the implementation team for the process. Mm. And there's, again, now you're expanding that, that, that space of change into areas that probably weren't expecting any change in their area for this improvement to happen at this part of the company, right? Yep. right. Well, we're at about 15 minutes. We haven't gone to all the myths. Um, <laughs> Check them out on the blog. They're all there. Right? <laughs> They're all on the blog. So I encourage you to read the blog article. There's a link to the blog article posted right here in Facebook. Um, so take a, take a look at it and, and comment. What, what do you think? What other myths are out there uh, in terms of Kanban or Scrum or Agile in general? And, and, and please engage with us. Um, uh, and, and we'll try to debunk those myths um, as they come in. Yeah, and, and reach out to us on, um, on, on LinkedIn or, or on Facebook. Uh, if you can answer some of your questions, we are happy to have that opportunity uh, to interact with you or your team. Yep. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And Thank we'll you. see you in a couple of weeks. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye.